Good morning. Welcome back to the course on advanced green manufacturing systems. Till now, what we have discussed, we have just uh, had an introduction on manufacturing system. We had uh, uh, an introduction to optimization techniques. We were talking about the quantification of the greenness. We have just uh, gone through the certain techniques, examples on that or uh, the case studies on that we take in the forthcoming lectures. So, uh, in this uh, specific lecture, I will discuss value engineering green plan. The contents would go like this, I will discuss what is value, then I will discuss what is value engineering. Now, by the end of this lecture, I suppose you would be clear that why we are discussing value engineering, why we are discussing about the value of the product, what is the value, we will discuss about various values and also we will talk about green value, which is one of the values here. What is value engineering? Value engineering is accomplishing the necessary functions of the product. We do not work on the product like we do not, for instance, I am designing a table. We do not work on okay, design of a table. We will design on the functions, something on which one has to keep its belongings, something on which a computer has to be kept, something on which the uh, office stationery has to be kept. Okay? It is to support objects, that is a function. We will discuss about this in detail. So, we will discuss about value engineering, various steps in value engineering, then I will take a case study on conducting value engineering, the whole process we discussed here. Then uh, we will also institute green objectives into it, that we will take when we will just proceed with the lecture. So, I will just discuss about the types of value the need for value engineering for green products. Okay. What is the need? We will see that value engineering has a specific domain that is known as creativity. You know what is creativity? Creativity is just forgetting about the proved facts and then thinking about the product in a way that is something new, something creative. As we say that kids are very creative, kids do not know the facts, they just have an idea in the mind, just they came up with that idea and uh, they just do that thing sometimes. And sometimes those things are really uh, implementable, those things are really you know can be induced in the daily life. So, we will discuss about the creativity in de detail, we will discuss about the different techniques of creativity and how creativity could help or has helped the people in developing the green products or processes. Okay, then we will discuss general cost cutting versus value engineering. As we know that uh, basic or the prime motive in manufacturing or in manufacturing systems is cost reduction profitability improvement. So, the primary function is to fulfill the need of the customer. Now, cost cutting is or cost cutting or uh, profitability is the concern of manufacturing people. Now, when we institute greenness or ecological products or green products or sustainability into this, in this case all the stakeholders have to be aware. Now, we will discuss that how value engineering can help in having a better or greener product. What is value? Value, the definition given by Maj, uh, there is a very famous book on value engineering by Maj. You can just follow that book. Uh, the value is the lowest cost to reliably provide the required functions or service at the desired time and place with essential quality. You see, there are three constituents, required functions, number one. Number two, functions or service, we can say functions of the product, service can also have some functions to be done. Okay. Then desired time and place, this is number two. Then with essential quality is number three. So, there are three components in the definition of value. If I talk about the value, 
in quantitative terms I can put a formula here value is equal to utility per unit cost. Okay. So, value engendering or value analysis, I will discuss the difference between engineering and analysis as well. It is primarily concerned with the economic value, we will I will discuss about the types of values. So, value as I said is the lowest cost. So, the objective qualities of value consist of use value and cost value. So, this is use value, what is the use of the product and what is the cost of this is how we can define value. Okay. The value gives ultimate satisfaction to the customer. The value can be many things like utility is for instance, uh, I need something to make a call, I purchase a mobile phone, I purchase a mobile phone that is something to make a call. What is the cost of the mobile phone or a cellular phone that can just make a call? Primary function of mobile phone is, is actually to make calls, receive calls send messages, receive messages. In 90s when just these mobile phones uh, came into the hand of the people, those were the only functions that it could do. Now we have smartphones. Okay. If we just need to uh, purchase a mobile, what is the cost of that mobile? To, to accomplish just primary functions, the cost of that mobile could be around maybe a thousand rupees you can get, get that product. Okay, utility is one thousand for that. Okay, for just accomplishing primary functions. The cost of that product, the basic mobile, basic function can be accomplished in a thousand rupees, but I get a mobile of maybe two thousand rupees. Okay. In this case, I can say this is this value is less than one. If I am thinking about the basic functions, so in this case we can just quantify the value in this way. But in the today's era, in the contemporary scenario, what we have, we have smartphones. Mobile phones are just not to do the primary functions. Now, for me, for instance, the functions of uh, functions in a mobile that I need to do, I need to see my emails, I need to download documents and read documents in that. So, that I have full size screen. For that, for instance, uh, I can spend around 10,000 rupees for a smartphone. Okay. This is a basic cellular phone. Now, for smartphone, okay, I am willing to spend 10,000 rupees, but I get a product of maybe you know, say 15,000 rupees or 12,000 rupees. Okay. So, this value is less than 1. So, something that a smartphone can do. For instance, I am not concerned about camera. If for instance, there is a mobile that is having a very good camera, but is coming in 12,000 rupees. There is another mobile that is coming in 8,000 rupees, but I was willing to spend 10,000 rupees. This is greater than 1. This is I can say case 1, case 2, case 3. In the case 3, I got a better product. Okay. This is value. So, next I have with me is value engineering. Now, this is uh, value engineering, Lawrence D. Miles is the father of value engineering. He practiced value engineering and uh, uh, there is a society known as SAVE, Society of American Value Engineers. Now, Mr. Miles was enforced to find the ways to produce products for General Electric, he worked for General Electric. Okay, after World War II, after World War II, uh, we know that there was scarcity of products, and Mr. Miles uh, uh, used a technique to develop number of products for the need of the people. Then, what happened? This value engineering methodology was developed, but later then uh, US Bureau of uh, Ships decided to use this value engineering as practiced by Miles. So, they added new employees and engineers and analysts. So, then the trade was earmarked. What is value engineering again? Value engineering is accomplishing the basic functions. Electricity 
eliminating the unnecessary functions. The purpose of value engineering is to get the better value without sacrificing the basic functions. So, basic functions I will put here without sacrificing these. Okay. We need to have a better value. Now, how could we have better value? You know, this is numerator and denominator. We have utility and cost. Either we have a, a better utility, utility enhancement, or cost reduction, or both. Okay, this is. improving value. Now, to do this, we have a methodology known as value engineering job plan. We will talk about value engineering grill plan. This utility can be, this can be uh, time, okay. this can be performance. For instance, I was talking about the cellular phones, okay. if my cellular phone is having better performance, there is no lag in uh, starting or uh, maybe switching on and off and uh, my emails or whatever the function I like to do in that, that is just happening in a very short instant. So, that is performance, then is quality, Quality is a subjective term, it has different meaning for different people. For some people, this uh, performance can also be quality. So, basic function has to be accomplished. Okay. So, this is how we can improve value. So, uh, value engineering was implemented by US government and uh, it was used in Environmental Production Agency, Department of Transportation, Federal Highway Administration. Then uh, certain other like they are uh, uh, the society save have a certification that is known as CVS. CVS is certified value specialist. So value engineering started in World War Two. Okay. Later uh, in 1947, Mr. Miles practiced value engineering and uh, actually he practiced value engineering in General Electric and uh, it, it, the team was developed and uh, he was assigned to the purchasing division to study new property concepts where he succeeded in developing an amazing new package of techniques. He named that value analysis the word value analysis came here. Okay. So, then uh, it was uh, a parallel technique to cost cutting, but it had something more in that. So, there are certain other milestones uh, in 60s, the first 1960 for the value engineering functions, fast technique was developed. Fast is function analysis system technique. Okay. Now, this happened uh, and uh, there is various uh, other things keep on coming. What happened in India in 1977 when people started practicing value engineering? So, and society was developed, a society was developed which is invest. Invest is Indian Value Engineering Society. So, there are certain companies they joined hands, the research was done in coordination with each other and value engineering was practiced all together. So, this serves Indian industry by dissemination of 
specialized knowledge to professionals who in turn could help industries to improve their profitability through the technique of the value engineering. Now, Invest organizes awareness training programs and workshops in which again the CVS certified value specialist certification is given and uh, other experts from both within and outside the countries come to train the people here. So, the conferences here provide an exciting forum for exchange of knowledge among active practitioners which help the practitioners to adopt and innovate in the area of work. So, SAFE society is working with all agencies nationally and internationally. Invest is the one of the you know can, can say component or the uh, uh, associated body with SAFE. I believe you would be having better feel when I actually discuss the value engineering job plan and I am just introducing what is value engineering and how, how from where did it come from. And people have implemented value engineering job plan in getting green processes and uh, green products as well. We will discuss on those also we will try to have a small case here. We will first, first I will discuss general value engineering study how does it this happen then I will institute green plan into this and I will actually do or try to practice here the engineering green plan and also a task will be given to you that you can do at your home. So, value the concept of value came in the very year of 350 BC when Aristotle classified value in seven classes which are still recognized today. He said value can be classified into economic, moral, social, political, aesthetic, religious, judicial. Economic value is the cost value that is there in business. The moral value, the values like someone say I believe in values. When he say believe in values, he actually believes in moral values which are instituted to him or her from his parents or maybe the teachers. So, those are moral values. Social values are something similar to moral value. It is like something how one uh, deals with the people in the society. So, that is social value, political value, aesthetic value, aesthetic value is talking about the appearance, okay, appearance of the product of the people, religious value, people have different religious values that they believe, then judicial values, all these values are here. So, I will talk about the value analysis in which economic value consists of subjective and objective qualities. It comprises of four specific kinds as follows. Number one is use value. Now, use values are properties or features or qualities that accomplish a use or work or service. These relates to attributes of a product which are enabled to perform its function. So, I can say the basic use of the product okay, or work or service. I uh, will just discuss about the use value in detail. First of all, let us see what are these four values. Esteem value is the properties or features or qualities I can say then that make an ownership of a product desirable. That is an esteem. It is the additional premium price with which a product can attract people like because of intrinsic attractiveness to the purchaser. For instance, uh, if you are going to purchase a motorbike. Okay, uh, for instance, a, a youngster of maybe 20, 20 years age, he would like to purchase a motorbike. What he would look? A motorbike should should run, should run properly. It is a use value. Okay. Now his esteem value might be like if he is a you know uh, if he like to drive very fast, he would like to have a motorbike that can uh, run uh, uh, maybe at uh, 120 kilometers per hour, or uh, he would like to have a motorbike that is of red color. He will have to, uh, might uh, be a motorbike that is uh, having a very great pickup. Okay, these are actually performance things. But I'm, if I talk about red color, that is an esteem value. Okay, if you know the Maslow's need hierarchy diagram, in which we have this kind of Maslow's need hierarchy diagram is, he said there are basic needs. Okay, basic needs are generally, if we talk Maslow's actually said the basic needs are the basic needs of human which is food, shelter and clothes. Okay. Then he said security, 
okay they need to have security then social needs then they have esteem needs as well after that they have self actualization that is something and a different tangent so when we talk about the product the basic needs of the bike is something to ride something to ride for two people security is it should run safely it should run safely so as the balance and everything is good social need in bike uh, we can say he will have to commute uh, to his work or all those things he can do esteem is the appearance or aesthetics okay that is esteem value so it is it adds a premium price or additional premium just to attract the customers next is cost value now these are the properties which is sum of the total cost of the product the total cost can be the material cost plus labor cost plus overhead cost okay this cost that is the cost value so this is uh, the cost required to produce or manufacture some it is the total cost of producing the product okay next is exchange value exchange value is the property is that make it possible to procure an item by trading like uh, in an international market we have exchange value for dollars exchange value is what is the value in which or on which we can exchange the product we can just have the trading between the products okay that is exchange value so it is sum of attributes which enable the product to be exchanged or sold now i'll discuss about these values also i'll put another value here that is green value now green value is producing eco friendly products how could we do that we'll see about uh, the life cycle analysis and uh, then i'll discuss that there are certain life cycle stages one is when i'm using the product for instance i am uh, using uh, my computer i'm using this this uh, tablet to write notes so this is during use before use the product is manufactured product is manufactured what happens during that and after use what is there after use and this is disposed of is it recycled or is it reused or is it just uh, disposed of at the three stages what is that we are uh, contributing to the environment i want I, if i don't say i can't say contribute actually how less we can um, deteriorate the environment so this is the green value so actually whenever we produce something some negative impact on the uh, on the environment is there so reducing that impact moving one step forward can be said to be a step towards greenness we'll discuss on this okay so this is green value so i'll discuss about different values use value steam value cost value so i have some examples for you uh, to explain the use value various values that we have discussed here so the value basic value that we are talking about is uh, in value engineering is use value so if i say use value cost value these are the two values which i generally talk about in a product okay then we have esteem value that adds something an additional premium as i said as i said then green value with the proper customer awareness with the customer uh, inclined towards purchasing green value it can also add something so basically the use value is the basic performance value you can say okay i have big this figure here this is an apple that you can eat if you get an apple of gold okay or if you get a bag 
that is just locked that cannot be opened cannot be opened would you like to purchase if you are hungry and you want to eat something would you like to have a gold apple one can think okay gold apple in an amazon or something and that a place is not desirable gold apple here okay you can send gold and purchase something that is a different part of story but yes when you are really hungry you would like to have something that could be used you need something to eat an apple that is or uh, you can say a replica of an apple in gold is not desirable okay then a bag that cannot be used that is locked for instance you want to purchase a shirt and uh, in the showrooms there are dummies okay dummies have the shirt for instance there is a shirt with a dummy that is a lock completely you cannot unbutton it you cannot use that would you like to purchase that that you cannot wear you won't purchase that so the basic function or basic performance has to be there so this is value use value and exchange value are related to each other so use value are the material qualities and quantities which is heterogeneous and these are quantities and which are which are homogeneous so immaterial and relational values are uh, here which that we are discussing next is cost value now cost versus value now this value as i said value is equal to benefit by price use value is the utility of consuming a goods that satisfy the power of a good or service in a classical uh, economy i would say so in marx critic karl marx used these examples here he said that any product that has a labor value and a use value and if it is traded as a commodity in markets it additionally has an exchange value this is the concept that he gave okay so most of it expressed as the money you can say so this is use value now cost value is the replacement cost or replacement value that refers to the amount that one can pay the replacement cost one is willing to pay willing to pay to replace an asset replace or i can say purchase or buy well said cost value for just having a smartphone or for having a basic phone the cost value is rupees 1000 in 1000 rupees i can get it for even i think i believe there are in the market where the mobile phones the cellular phones of rupees 500 also so the 500 would be the cost value the basic value one is willing to pay for that for instance uh, in insurance industry replacement cost or replacement cost value is one of the several methods of determining value of an insured item okay when we insure your car what is the replacement cost if someone buys your used car so what is the replacement cost of that for instance i have purchased a car of 5 lakhs and uh, after 2 years of use i will get that insurance there will be replacement value of that car for instance they they put 3 lakhs of that value that is the cost value of that car at that juncture after 2 years of use so next is esteem value esteem value can be defined as a subjective value to a client that attributes to the product that makes them feel good about owning the product for instance apple mobile okay people say i have an apple ipod generally this is the perception they say the apple ipod okay apple apple mobile some esteem value is also associated with that esteem value is something that adds to the style to the uh, you know higher living standards of the people so this is esteem value so esteem value is uh, i can say a subjective value so this makes makes the owner feel uh, feel good about owning the product ok 
ओके सो आई कैन से वी फील दैट मेक्स द ऑनर फील गुड और एडमायर्ड ओके इट इज समथिंग दैट इज दैट इज समथिंग यू गट माई योर सेल्फ एडमायर्ड और समथिंग यू नीड टू हैव सम रिस्पेक्ट और एडमायरेशन और यू नो सम ऑनर और सम प्रेज सो फॉर दैट समटाइम पीपल परचेज द प्रोडक्ट्स एज वेल सो दिस एड सम थिंग्स टू द प्रोडक्ट और द चॉइस ऑफ द पीपल एज वेल सो दिस इज स्टीम वैल्यू सो नेक्स्ट इज एक्सचेंज वैल्यू एज अ सैड Exchange value is the quantified worth of one good or service expressed in the terms of the worth of another. Express. in terms of the worth of another okay for example uh, in business as i said like the exchange rates for in business of foreign exchange the value of each currency is expressed in a terms of value of another currency okay like price of dollar 1 dollar today the price uh, is maybe 71 rupees so this is the foreign exchange now this creates a value or exchange rate for each currency relative to benchmark currency so this is benchmark currency so this is exchange value so exchange value does not need to be expressed in money prices necessary uh, i would not go much detail in exchange value but green value is the prime concern in this course what is green value so green value is the value that is related to the environmental interest of the people or environment concern of the people that influence the consumers buying patterns so if the consumer is aware or oh, he would like to purchase an eco friendly products so these values can be instituted value this is value related to environmental concern that influence the consumers buying pattern buying behavior say if and say green value so this green value akin to a sustainability index so we can say it can be greenness per unit cost okay i am just using a simple formula however this value can be subjective and we can use various uh, relations in that we certain things we will discuss that is si that is sustainability index however it is actually not index it's indices sustainability indices are there okay then also we have uh, green performance index certain indices will discuss in the forthcoming lectures okay. this greenness per unit cost greenness can be you can say you can say green energy or green i can say reducing pollution or green material these things will discuss energy can be while using the product while manufacturing the product or after use for instance uh, while manufacturing the mobile phone what is the total energy that is consumed or that is uh, that we call as embodied energy the energy that is uh, used to produce 
one unit of product in that uh, specific product that we call it a modded energy. It is during manufacturing. Okay, this is energy pollution. What is the pollution that is produced? That energy can be reduced. First of all, we are talking about energy. Energy can be reduced either we use uh, renewable sources of energy or we devise certain processes that helps to reduce the energy or try to minimize the energy. In that case, the cost that will be incurred can be same or even it is at higher. If greenness is higher, much higher, then we can have value. For instance, if the value, uh, the greenness has improved from, I will tell you how to quantify greenness. So, I will say if a greenness has improved from 1.5 to 1.6 and the cost has gone from maybe 1.0 to 1.05. Again, we can say 1.5 by 1.0 is less than 1.6 by 1.05. From where does these numbers come? This we will discuss. As Dr. Bridipu will be discussing quantifying greenness, this we will discuss. For this ratio is greater. So, that means the green value is improved. Green value. Now, this greenness when we talk about the green value this can be uh, the certain uh, parameter certain uh, characteristics or certain areas in which that could be done that can be done by having a uh, environmental preservation for instance uh, uh, ipc is uh, planting trees, it is having vertical gardens in its uh, in its plant. For instance, a company is manufacturing something and it is producing 1 ton of carbon footprint. To mitigate that 1 ton of carbon footprint, if we cannot do much, it can do something like uh, reforestation or certain uh, measures can be taken to add something to the environment. This is called environment preservation. Okay? So, again fair trade because we are talking about manufacturing systems, manufacturing systems they also come the supply chain. In supply chain fair trade where we where one can uh, think of uh, uh, buying something that is close to their plant, okay? buying locally available uh, uh, machines or having the ancillary units at the very closer places. Those can be for examples of fair trade. Also, we have a uh, uh, holistic health. When we talk about green manufacturing systems, we also need to talk about the future that we talk about sustainability and the current scenario as well. In the current scenario, we need to talk about the holistic health. Uh, like the in the previous version of this course, uh, the, the sustainability through green manufacturing systems that is the course we discussed about a manufacturing uh, 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 practice or manufacturing uh, system in which we try to control the aerosols which are produced during machining. Cutting fluid is there when cutting fluid uh, is dispersed uh, or is uh, thrown on the workpiece using uh, the smaller ways the way that we used was minimum quantity lubrication in which the mist of the flue is thrown to provide lubrication and cooling where the machining is happening. But that mist is also dispersed or spreads uh, in the environment. That should not deteriorate the worker's health. To minimize that spread or that dispersion is also one of the issues. So, holistic health we can have uh, health insurance plans or all those things. So, regular checkups can be made. So, those are the part of the green manufacturing systems. Okay. Next, uh, mm, we can have organic products. Then we can use in the case of uh, energy, when we are talking about energy, we can use uh, renewable energy. Okay, using clean technologies. So, the environmental performance or uh, 
sustainability metrics are increasingly considered important criteria in the property of investment decision when the companies are trying to invest somewhere so they are considering the environmental performance or sustainability metrics that we'll discuss actually these are metrics here sustainability metrics so uh, investors require information on the costs and benefits associated with developing managing investing in the manufacturing in the factories okay with the superior environmental performance okay. i can just put the term superior environmental performance this is the ultimate aim one of the reasons is for if we going green also helps to reduce cost that is there going green uh, the, the customers are generally sometimes willing to pay more for greener products there is a study that happened in a specific uh, shopping center in us where they try to identify how many customers are asking for green products they uh, observed that 50% 50 50% of the customers are asking for green products in us in india because the basic needs as i said food shelter and clothes is not being met so the customers are not asking for green products these days but yes because the pollution is too high kanpur where id kanpur is located now then the kanpur city is now in the top of the list of the most polluted cities in the world so this is we are living in the most polluted city here in kanpur so this has made people somewhat aware to think about greenness for instance uh, there is a firm that uh, it, it is generated by iit kanpur uh, alumni that is uh, help us green so uh, this guy is uh, ankit and uh, i can't uh, recall the other name uh, these are the iit kanpur alumni who identified that uh, millions of tons of the flower flowers are offered to the in the temples to the god okay to what happens uh, what happened to those flowers after the specific occasion for instance if hap, hap, if it happens in, on the day of shivratri shivratri is the birth of the lord shiva or in in that night that happens next days on the very next day all these flowers are thrown into river ganges so that becomes a kind of a waste so what they decided they decided to collect those flowers and make a material that is a substitute to thermocol a biodegradable substitute to, th to thermocol okay thermocol can be replaced from that specific material number one then they made incense sticks out of that so this is an initiative uh, and they also recognized by un now united nations so these are the certain uh, initiatives that people have taken and those are very successful and people are uh, now willing to pay for green products now out of the uh, that the example that i was talking about the study that happened in us regarding the awareness of the people on green products the people who ask for the ecologically friendly products 50% of them asked out of 50% those who didn't ask 34% were not even aware that green products exist so awareness has to be there so everyone is the part of the body every party has to be uh, associated or has to be involved in this so this is uh, we can say fair trade not within the business but with the consumers and all others as well so a number of empirical studies have sought to explore the economics of sustainability and energy efficiency in residential and commercial buildings in factories in uh, machining in uh, water treatment in all these things and uh, they have investigated the contributions of policies that promote the sustainability uh, despite of the growing prominence of the sustainable efforts this strand of research is still in its infancy and the existing techniques are just a piece meal or fragmented we do not have a holistic way how to deal with greenness how our people are much aware now nowadays 
So, but still we need to have a specific system. So, that is why we are trying to uh, having try to have a look on green manufacturing systems in this course. Value engineering can be one of the techniques in which we apply the creativity or creative uh, approaches to get the greener product. Okay. Similar to value engineering, there are certain other quantifying uh, ways. We will discuss on those as well, but uh, we will discuss value engineering in this specific lecture now. What is the need of value engineering? As I told you the stories and certain uh, things which are happening in the environment. So, this is from the business viewpoint, business are lagging productivity and they need something to enhance their business performance. Enhance the production process. Okay. Then a changing business environment, people are being aware of green products. Okay. Then evolving industry and business practices, this is again green things as green uh, uh, products and certain other practices for instance, additive manufacturing. Additive manufacturing is coming up now. Basically, the product is manufactured using the subtractive method. When we we need to produce something, for instance, if we need to produce a, a table, what we do? We have to just uh, scrap the extra wood off the basic size that is required. Or whenever we need to, for instance, you need to manufacture something, a shaft, a material has to be removed. Additive manufacturing is we do not have to take the scrap off. You just keep on adding the material. This is also known as uh, rapid manufacturing. That also we will discuss a little how rapid manufacturing is also somewhat green. This we will discuss. The changing customer expectations that is also one of the needs of value engineering. Now, misalignment of business requirement and supporting applications. This is the basic thing. What is the need of the customer and what is the product? Okay. It has to be very much aligned. Okay. This misalignment cannot be there. Apart from this, there is poor communication in developing a project scope. Scope of the project. We will talk about life cycle assessment. Okay. In life cycle assessment, the very first step is to identify the scope of the product. Sometimes the lack of consensus among the project stakeholders is there. So, with regard to project scope, then outdated or inappropriate design standards are there, then um, some assumptions are there, those are not correct, then previous designs people do believe, there are sometimes wrong beliefs. So, these are the basic need of value engineering to get the green product. So, the reason for value engineering can be if marketers expect a product that can become practically or statistically obsolete within a specific length of time, they can redesign it not only to last for the specific lifetime, but also to have a better performance or something. Okay. The products could be built with a higher grade components or uh, but uh, with the uh, Value engineering, we do not talk, talk just do not only talk about the higher grade components, we talk about that why not we impose something so that the unnecessary functions are eliminated. Now, value engineering will reduce costs, the cost those are generally looked upon. So, in that, I will discuss about the general cost reduction and value engineering. Now, cost reduction. and value engineering can be compared in these parameters. Now, what is a product here? Product viewpoint. In cost reduction, we think about the components. We only think about the components or uh, items, okay. but in value engineering, we think about the functions. 
for instance, uh, okay, this is my pen. The component of the product, this is stylus actually. The stylus has this button, okay, these buttons, this is a eraser button at the end. So, it has a tip here. So, how can I just think about the components? So, this component, this component, how, how can I make it green? How can I make the cover? Maybe I can have, have a paper that is biodegradable material. I can have those many uh, things that can make the product green. Why not we think about the function? The function of this to write something. Why not to have the complete body, the complete material that is green? Like function is just to write on a tablet or we think about the pen. So, the functions are focused in value engineering. Second is the ideas when we talk about cost reduction, the ideas are just convergent converging towards only specific product. But in value engineering what happens because we have creativity, first we have a number of ideas, one of the techniques of creativity is brainstorming. We have number of ideas and those ideas are first diverged, then we pick from them and then coverage. So, it is divergent and convergent, first divergent then convergent. Now, practices, now this follows past practices, okay, that is uh, analytical approach is there and uh, this exercise is creativity, value engineering exercise is In creativity, we do not criticize the ideas, no criticism. Now, cost visibility. The cost visibility in general cost reduction is what is process cost, what is material cost or uh, we can say component cost, then we have uh, labor cost, then we have overheads and miscellaneous. But in case of value engineering, we talk about the functions as I said the certain basic functions. Then we have secondary functions, basic function of this product for instance uh, a pen is to write, to mark, to make mark I can say. The secondary function is for instance uh, my daughter she said so, Papa I would just like to get a pen that is blue in color, the body should be blue. Now her requirement is blue body pen. So, that is the secondary function in the pen, the pen cover is made blue, but the basic function is the ink and the nib that is writing. So, those secondary functions are also important sometimes, okay, those are not basic functions, but important. Apart from this, there can be functions that are not necessary. So, these functions are to be, uh, are to be identified. Now, the cost is being viewed as the cost for getting the basic functions done, for the secondary functions done and the cost that is associated with the unnecessary function. This cost can be eliminated and these costs can be minimized. So, this is minimized, this is eliminated. Okay. So, this is value engineering, before uh, going to the value engineering methodology, I have a small task for you people, you just pick any product, pick a product, the product that you can pick 
any product that is there in jelly use you can pick uh, your uh, as I quote it cellular phone or uh, you can pick uh, your uh, pencil okay your shoes anything that you like a chair or anything that you like so try to see different components you can search on internet what are the different components of cellular phone what is the material of that component and try to segregate those into different uh, areas for instance uh, we you talk about uh, cellular phone plastic and metal then you can say cover and internal components okay so these are just identifying the components this will help you then you please try to find out the cost of these components then try to sum up the cost and try to see whether whether components that you have for instance cost for component 1 plus cost of component 2 plus cost of component 3 is it coming equivalent to the cost of the product okay this is one thing second thing is this is from the cost viewpoint as i said from cost reduction viewpoint if you say now we will see the value engineering viewpoint try to see now i pick an example of shoe for instance shoe has laces on it okay you have laces or strap or something then it has sole try to first see the cost of this now we do try to see the functions of this specific what is the function of sole what is the fun function of the profile of the sole internal profile what is the function of the color that is there of the shoe okay what is the color function of the laces and uh, all these things you can just try to identify different functions and cost of that so just broadly you need to identify i'll give you a detailed task in the forthcoming uh, lectures so then we'll see that so let us meet in the next lecture thank you